So uh, I'm a pulmonologist and critical care doctor. So I see a lot of lung related stuff and which seems to be the most common. There's also, of course, mental health issues which are coming up a lot. Anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress. Uh, people who were on oxygen and now you know don't need oxygen but still feel like they're short of breath. There are people who actually had lung damage where there was scarring in the lung, which you mentioned earlier, and they have difficulty in breathing and they're noticing that. So we, are, we need to see them relatively quickly. We're also seeing patients who've had a wheezing happening after the viral infection. And that's also seen in other viruses too. And sometimes they may need medicines to relax the air tubes. And people who've had asthma may have symptoms flare up after this. Now, there's another aspect to this where we are seeing people with uh, cardiac issues. Again, not common, but we have seen people with that. And some people get blood clots. And the blood clots can be in the lungs, which can cause breathing difficulty. They can be in the limbs, which may cause gangrene of the extremities. We've also seen people with uh, kind of strokes in the brain where they have sudden weakness, difficulty in vision. Uh, those have been seen. And rarely, we have also seen heart attacks related to blood clots because of COVID. And that's also known to happen. So any and all of these have a symptom that pops up, like vision disturbance, chest pain, shortness of breath that's not going away. So don't ignore those symptoms, especially if they're not going away. What about the GI system? Do we also see a lot of post-COVID? Um, sure. I've not seen that many. I do know that some people have had difficulty with loss of appetite. I've also seen some people with chronic diarrhea that set in after COVID. But other than that, I've not seen anything major so far. There have been the rare, rare instances of this blood clot situation in the gut where they had you know, needed surgery. But otherwise, it's a very unusual thing for the GI thing to be prolonged. But there are some schools of thought which say that some people with irritable bowel syndrome have or inflammatory bowel disease, they've had some disturbances because of this. Uh, there are, of course, side effects of the drug. So, for example, if you've been on steroids, for example, you can get gastritis, irritation of the stomach lining, and that can lead to bleeding in the gut. And that is something that we have noticed in some patients. Likewise, many people have had low hemoglobin to start with, then they've gone on medicines which lower the hemoglobin more, and then they end up anemic. And if you're, if you're anemic, then you end up with shortness of blood because you don't have enough blood supply in your system. Uh, you were talking about the side effects of the medications that are used for COVID. So could you tell us a little more about what, what kind of, uh, apart from the gastric sure. irritation caused by the steroids, sure. uh, anything else that uh, people should be aware of if they have been treated and also manifests in the post-COVID? Sure. Sure. See, there's, of course, the acute uh, side effects which can happen with all the medicines, but long term, say beyond a month, six weeks, etc. If you've received medicines to suppress your immunity, it, like not just steroids, but other drugs, including, say, immunoglobulins, or if you received uh, these newer drugs like baricitinib, for example, or if you received tocilizumab or, or the, the cytokine storm anti-drugs, if or any of those you received, you may need to watch your immune system not fighting if you get another infection. So there's a condition where your adrenal gland, so very quickly, you have a little gland called the adrenal gland, sits on top of the kidneys. It produces all the stress hormones, adrenaline to fight, and you know, then the steroid medicine, which you normally need in the body, the glucocorticoids, the mineralocorticoids, which keep your blood pressure up. These are normally produced, but sometimes you get steroids from outside. The body says, hey, you know what? I'm getting it from outside. I don't need to make any more, and the body's level goes down. Down the line, if you get an infection and your body has to fight the infection, you do need in your steroids in the body to kick in. But because the body is not producing, it may not happen. And then you need to give medicine from outside to balance that. That's one thing that can happen. The other thing that can happen is long-term effects of steroids can include bringing out diabetes. You can also get a uh, risk of infections. You can also weaken the bones if you're on long-term steroids. And you can also end up with sleep disturbance, for example, just from having steroids for long-term. Other drugs which lower the immunity can put you at risk of tuberculosis coming back out. So a lot of people in India are exposed to TB, but don't have TB as such. But if your immunity goes down, that can happen. So if you're getting a... Oh, 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 o